Hey guys, welcome back. So today, I thought we'd have a chat about the PlayStation 2. And yeah, interestingly enough, in a recent video, <laughs> I kind of let it slip, and it really wasn't intentional, it just came out when I was talking, that the PlayStation 2 is my least favourite console. Um, the reason for that is I've just had a really checkered history with the system. I've never really got along with it, apart from at launch. So, yeah. <laughs> I kind of regretted it after, afterwards. I, I didn't think it would be that big a deal saying that, but obviously a couple of people decided to, you know, point it out in the comments like, "Oh, bit bold that Pete." But, <laughs> but yeah, it made me laugh anyway. I thought it's funny. So yeah, I mean, the reason I'm making this video is because I've been playing PlayStation 2 quite a bit recently. Actually, I've actually kind of started to like the system a bit more and really get into it. So because like every time I start down on the PS2, people always say to me, "Well," There's this massive library of games and all these really great 2D games and there's all this stuff you're missing out on. Just give it a chance. So I have been recently. I've been sitting down and playing a few games. And I've actually really enjoyed playing them a lot. And I was quite surprised. So I thought what we do in this video, I'll just start off by giving you a brief history of my journey with the PlayStation 2. And show you the games that I've got, which is not a whole lot at the moment. And then obviously talk about you know what's happening and why I'm starting to change a little bit. So PS2 is a console that at the time I was a massive PlayStation guy. You know, like most people in this country, I think, well, around the world, in fact, PlayStation was so dominant back in the 90s. And I absolutely loved my PS1 to death. It was an amazing console. And when the PS2 was announced, I just couldn't wait to get my hands on one. And uh, it was the year 2000, I believe, it came out. And I remember I got one, it was like a week, two weeks after launch because it was really hard to get one at the time. All the pre-orders were taken up. And we, me and my mate Steve were quite late getting our pre-orders in. But I managed to get one anyway. And I had a, a decent amount of games at launch as well. I had, from memory, I had Time Splitters, Tekken Tag Tournament. I had Silent Scope. I don't know. Oh yeah, of course. I think it, I'm think i pretty certain I had Smuggler's Run as well. I'm pretty sure that was a launch title. So I had a good variety there. You, know, you got some racing, some fighting, some shooting, like first person. Uh, you got Silent Scope, which is like an arcade classic. So I had a good variety to test out the system. And for that first year, I thought the PS2 was absolutely incredible because you know, I'm coming off the PS1. The PS2 is 128-bit, so it's like uh, to the mass, like four times the power of the PlayStation being a 32-bit system. It's just, you know, incredible when you look back. And like, I remember getting Grand Theft Auto 3 and being absolutely blown away when it started raining. You know, I mean, I know it looks archaic now, but at the time, the graphics, the 3D environment, being able to roam around in that world was just stunning. I really enjoyed the console, but of course, in the background, there was this thing called the Xbox that was coming about, and there was a channel on cable in Birmingham, I don't remember what it was called, but I remember they were, they, they just, I don't think it was a gaming channel, I think it was something else, but they had like gaming segments. And I just remember seeing some footage of Halo, when Master Chief's running along shooting all the little dudes, and it looked so advanced compared to what the PlayStation 2 had to offer graphically. And even just the game itself, I mean, it looked you know, massively advanced to see that kind of first-person shooter, a story-driven one, on a console at that point. It was just incredible. And I was just like, I really want an Xbox. But of course, just like Sony back in the 90s, Microsoft are coming into the gaming sphere with no history. You know, Obviously, they've got PC stuff, but I mean, consoles, nobody knew if Microsoft was any good, if they could do it. And it would have been a punt. And so the, the thing that hinged on for me was Grand Theft Auto 3. I heard it was coming out on Xbox. And I said to myself, you know what? If Grand Theft Auto 3 comes to Xbox, I'm going to jump ship because I really want to play that Halo game. It looks amazing. And I remember Amazon listed it as a pre-order. And then I thought, great. So I sold my PS2, got the money together for the Xbox, put the pre-order in, and then they took the listing down for Grand Theft Auto 3. And I was like, shit. <laughs> and I honestly thought I'd made the worst decision in my life when I did that. Luckily, later on, it did come back, and of course, all three Grand Theft Auto games did come to Xbox, thank God. But yeah, that was that hairy moment where I was like, oh shit, I've made the right decision there. Uh, of course, when I got my Xbox on launch day, and I was playing like Rally Sport Challenge, Dead or Alive 3, Halo, I was just like, hell yeah, I made the right decision, because it's just an incredible system. And Halo is just a phenomenal game that gave me and my friends so much gaming time and so you know so great memories of playing with my mate in co-op playing through the whole game and it's just a fantastic title so the ps2 just went away at that point and it was really around 2000 probably i'm trying to think now i think about 
03045, somewhere around there, when I was getting into the collecting, that I, I went and picked up a PS2 again and I gave it another shot. And like over the years, I've had several PlayStation 2s where I've gone back to try and get into the system. And I've never had much success with it. I always seem to play the same games like Smuggler's Run, Time Crisis 2, which is a classic. The games that are exclusive and I can't play on Xbox, really. And I've never really branched out. There's been the odd occasion, like in the last few years, where I've picked up an occasional game that I've never heard of and tried it and been impressed. But for the most part, I've always been an Xbox guy. Back in the day, if you look on my old videos, I had a substantial Xbox collection. And I was, you know, this was the days when you could get them cheap in Game Station and they were doing bundles. And I was, you know, picking them up car boots and everything. And you just, I had absolute stacks of great Xbox games. So I've never really collected for the PlayStation 2 or really got that love that I had back in the year 2000, which is a real shame because I want that back. And so recently, that has started to change a little bit. So what I'm going to do first of all, though, I'm going to just show you the games I've got. I'm going to talk, a quick brief talk about the ones I have played and let you know where I am. And then we'll explain what's going on. But yeah, so first game I've got is an absolutely brilliant game, one that I've discovered since buying the PlayStation games. Um, and that is 24 The Game. Um, big fan of the TV show, and this is just an absolutely fantastic title. Third person, action, cover, sort of, uh, shooter. And it's just brilliant. If you're a fan of the show, you're going to love this. It's set between, between seasons two and three. And it is an incredible title. It really is like playing the TV show, playing as the characters. You get to play more than Jack. You get to play as Tony, Michelle. You get to play as Kim, Chase. Uh, it's really really varied. You get vehicle uh, sections as well as the combat. And it, it's set out exactly the, way, the, same, the same way the TV show is. It's phenomenal. I've, I've talked about it before, but... If you've never played it and you love the, love the show, you're going to love this game. If you've never play, watched the show, still play it because it's just an incredible story experience for that time. It's so well done and the gameplay is incredible. So yeah, I love that, that game. It's brilliant. Uh, this next one, don't judge me, is Britney's Dance Beat. Now the reason I've got this is because, as a lot of people will know, I'm a massive Britney Spears fan so I had to buy this. Um, it's really cheap as well. It's like 50p or something. So <laughs> it's actually not that bad. I did try it out when I got it. Uh, it's just a rhythm game basically, you have Britney on the right hand side, she's dancing and, and giving you words of encouragement to, while well, she's dancing to her songs and you just have to tap the uh, the square triangle circle X in the right order. Uh, it's not that easy either, it does get quite tough but yeah, it's, it's alright, it's decent. Uh, another one is a recent pickup so I won't talk too much about it because I'm going to show it in another video when I do a pickup video and that is Cold Winter which is no surprise to most people that watch my channel because this is like the one PlayStation 2 game that I always bang on about as an exclusive that nobody talks about and it's an incredible title. So I'll talk about that more in an upcoming pickup video, but if you've never checked it out, please do. It's an absolutely stunning game. Storyline, oh my God. Um, and then I've got The Getaway and The Getaway Black Monday. Uh, I'll be honest with you, they're not very playable. They're pretty rubbish. <laughs> I mean, they were never great when they came out, but I put Black Monday on the other day, or a couple of days back over the weekend, and the controls are shit. Oh, it's terrible, man. You can't aim properly. There's no. There seems to be a sort of auto lock on, but it's not. It sort of just shoots at them, and you might hit them. Uh, the, the manual aim has got no crosshair or anything, unless it's in the options. I don't know. But I was getting stressed. I was like, I don't understand what's going on. And I couldn't control the character well. And I was running out of ammo, and it was just. And that was just on the first part on the estate. I couldn't get off it. So, yeah, I don't like it. I, I, it's, I can see why the getaway faded away. And number three on the PS3 never made it to made it to uh, never came out. That's what I'm looking just trying to say. Yeah, it was shit. Anyway, <laughs> next one is Killzone, uh, the only decent Killzone game as far as I'm concerned. I think you know, Killzone Two is unplayable because of the controls. Killzone Three is incredibly boring, and Shadowfall again is incredibly boring. So I don't like guerrilla games. I think they make really beautiful, boring games. Uh, including Horizon Zero Dawn. Bored the shit out of me that this. <laughs> Next one is brilliant game, Medal of Honor Vanguard. I'd never played it until I started picking these games up recently in the last year or so. Uh, this is incredible. The unfortunate thing, I've got right to the last mission and I just cannot do it. If you've ever played it, you'll know the sniper section and it's just an absolute pain in the ass. I've made it through to the end of the level once and then you have all this combat section and there's tanks and it's just an absolute bleeding nightmare. And it kind of put me off going back to try and finish, which is really annoying because I've tried so many times, but I haven't played it for a couple of months now. And it's a shame because the actual game is brilliant. It's got modern day controls with a twin stick, and it's an absolutely rock solid uh, World War II first person shooter. I love it, really good. Oh yeah, I had this back in the year 2000 and all, I believe. Or it could have been 2001 when the Xbox came out. 
but then again it wouldn't be before the Xbox because I sold my PS2. Anyway, I did play this back in the day along with Unreal Tournament and that is Quake 3. Is it Quake? Yes, yeah, Quake 3 Revolution. I was going to say Arena, but I think that's a Dreamcast version. Quake 3 Revolution, I love... This is the only kind of competitive first-person shooter I do actually like to play, is the arena shooters where you're just running around in circles, blasting each other and doing the jump in the air and firing rockets. It's great fun. And it plays really well still. It's a great game. The game I picked up last year, I had no idea about it, other than I'd seen it online. I was looking for lists for exclusives, and this was one that came up and I thought it looked cool. And it's actually pretty good. Uh, it's called Shocks. It's uh, Shocks Rally Reinvented. So basically it's an arcade racing game. Uh, pretty good, really nice graphics as well. Uh, game from launch, Silent Scope. Obviously I said, you know, brilliant game, really fun. The other two are on PlayStation. The Xbox got all three in a compilation, uh, which is I think Silent Scope Complete. So yeah, very cool. I do like Silent Scope, it's really fun. Uh, obviously this will be no surprise. Smugglers Run 2, Hostile Territory. I still need to get the first one, I haven't found it in the wild. So when this is all over and I can go back to CEX, I'll be hunting that down. Uh, I've been playing this a lot actually, I was playing it a couple of days ago again. And I didn't realise that not only have you got the missions, there's also extra for stuff you can do. So there's there's one option you can do is racing, like the old game, but you're just basically racing the other cars and the buggies. And you've got to get from checkpoint to checkpoint. And I love that, it's so much fun. So yeah, I mean, these games are pretty... I really wish we would get a new Smugglers run. It's really about time. It's been too many years and it's a great series of games. Uh, then these are obviously going to be in the, in the here because they have to be. Time Crisis 2, one of the greatest arcade ca cabinets of all time. And Time Crisis 3, which is actually pretty decent. I never played it in the arcades. I assume it came out in the arcades. I only played it on PlayStation, but it's very good. Uh, I need to get Crisis Zone. So that's the games I've got. I haven't got a lot, as I say. Um, I've completed 24. I've completed Cold Winter. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, a lot of them are like arcade pickup games. Obviously, Gateway does my nuts, so I probably won't finish those two. But I've been having a lot of fun lately. I've been playing the PlayStation 1 and the PlayStation 2 a shitload. Um, the Xbox hasn't really got a look in. And it's really starting to change my mind about PlayStation 2. I still think the controller's crap. I don't think the DualShock 2 is anywhere near as good as the DualShock, DualShock 3 or DualShock 4. And the DualShock 3, as we know, has got shit triggers on it. Uh, they're slippery. But the DualShock 2 just doesn't feel right to me. And I know they've got this, um, this gimmick that they came up with the pressure sensitive buttons. But that's the kind of thing that lets you down. Like when you're playing Shocks, it feels like you have to really ram the buttons to get some speed. I don't like that, it's annoying. So the controller's a bit bollocks, I'm not happy with that. But I've got used to it. I mean, the, the general layout is PlayStation, so I like that layout. I like the sticks horizontal. Um, I know a lot of people, there's a big debate at the moment still about where the sticks should be placed, especially on the PS5, because people want them like an Xbox offset. But I personally don't mind, I play both ways. But I do prefer the PlayStation, I think. I think the PlayStation one just feels more comfortable for me and my hands. So yeah, the console itself has been great. I mean, obviously I've always said over the years, back then I was a big Xbox guy and I was it was the only time really, apart from the Super Nintendo maybe, when I was a proper fanboy and I would just slate the PlayStation 2. I remember mate Jav at work would just take the piss out of PS2. I think I've said this in the video before, when Splinter Cell came out and they eventually came to PS2 and we just ripped the shit out of it because we was like, that ain't never going to work on a PS2. It's going to look like crap. Um, I don't know if it does, but it probably doesn't actually, but we just thought it was going to look like shit. Because, you know, the Xbox was so much powerful. You've got the PS2, then you've got the GameCube, then you've got the Xbox, and the Xbox had like 733 megahertz processor. It had all this PC tech inside it, and it totally kicked the shit out of the PlayStation in terms of power. But, I've always thought over the years, cross-platform, obviously you get them on Xbox, they're going to look better, they're going to run smooth and have better frame rates and that. And that probably is true. But I started, because I've been playing it recently, I had a look at a couple of comparison videos. Now, Black by EA is one of those amazing shooters, the game that I bang on about a lot because I absolutely love it. And I've never wanted to get it on PS2. I think I owned it once a few years ago now, way back. And I don't even know if I played it or not, I can't remember. But I was looking at a comparison video the other day on, on YouTube, and the guy did a great side-by-side -side with the shotgun. And the shotgun was up in the air, and on the shotgun there's like rivets in the top, there's like holes across the top of the shotgun. Now, on the PlayStation version, the PlayStation 2, you could define that, that there were holes in the shotgun. You could see all, all the detail on the shotgun. On the Xbox version, it was really dark and muddy, and most of the holes were missing. Now, of course, this comes down to the fact that it could be down to uh, contrast brightness, uh, the, the, the technology in the consoles, how they're outputting, what cables he's using, what capture device he's using. Is he doing any post-production? I don't know. Um, or is it just a straight feed? So there's all kinds of like reasons 
as to why they might look different. But I honestly, besides that, when I looked at the side by side, there wasn't a great difference that I expected. I expected the Xbox to outshine the PS2 massively with lighting effects and explosions and whatnot. Not really. It looked fine on the PS2. So I do want to pick that up if I can find it cheap because I want to do a comparison myself and play it on my CRTs and see how it looks and feels. But yeah, it's quite surprising. It's a bit of an eye opener. So I'm going to start picking up a few cross platform games when we can get back out to CEX and uh, see how I get on, see if they, uh, if they stack up with the Xbox or not. Because I'm quite surprised. I'm also really enjoying as well having my PlayStation unit over there. So I've got all my games laid out. I've got PlayStation 1 at the top, then 2, 3, and 4. And it's fantastic. So I mean, you know, I've got. All the PlayStation 3 games I want, bar about five, I think now. There's hardly anything I want for that. Uh, PS1 is ongoing, there's shitloads I need for that. PS4 is just current gen, so I just buy them as and when. And PS2, when I get back to CEX, I'm going to start picking up a few more games. But I'm actually starting to really, really enjoy the console. I'm really surprised how much I'm enjoying it. The one issue I have had, though, which was kind of annoying, it's a technical issue, but I have solved it. And that was on the CRT in 4.3, uh, the 4.3 CRT behind me. When I put the PlayStation 1 on, the image is central, no problem at all, for RGB SCART. Using the exact same RGB SCART cable in the PlayStation 2, the picture is offset to the right-hand side, so you get a one-inch border there on the left-hand side. And it was proper vexing me, because I was like, I don't understand why it's doing this, don't get it. So I looked into it, did a bit of uh, Googling and whatnot, read a few forums, and apparently it's the PlayStation 2 itself, it's the way it was designed, it's, it's not very well done when it comes to that. But people kept saying that, in most games, you can go into the options and you can shift the screen. So I tried it, and like I tried Shocks, and I tried, I think, yeah, it was 24 as well, because 24 is like really advanced. It's got like PAL 50, NTSC 60, and it's got progressive if you've got component cable, so it's a pretty advanced game. I think it's like 2006, so it should be. But anyway, that's beside the point. But they both shifted to the right, and I went into the options, and yeah, sure enough, you can shift the picture, so you can centralize the picture. Now, I know a lot of people go, who gives this shit, I just want to play the game. I understand. But it just bugs me. If I'm trying to play the game and I'm looking at the screen and all I can see is that it's offset to the right hand side and there's a one inch border and there's a bit of text off the screen. It just irritates me so I had to alter it. Um, so now I know I can do that, it's fantastic. And if most games do do that, brilliant. But yeah, I'm actually really surprised how much I'm actually enjoying the PlayStation 2 and it isn't as shit as I once thought it was. Uh, I've always derided it, as I say, because you know, I was an Xbox fanboy. The Xbox was and is like, an incredible beast of a machine. But the PlayStation 2 is starting to turn the corner finally. It's crazy because, you know, it always sounds like I hate PlayStation, but I love the PS1. I absolutely adore the PS3. It's an incredible system. And I love the PS4. Great console. It's just the PS2, just because I was so heavily Xbox, that PS2 being so underpowered compared to the Xbox never worked for me. And, and yet I missed out on so many games. I say, like, there you got the Time Crisis games only on PS2, you got 24 the game only on PS2 you got Cold Winter only on PS2, and the list goes on and on, and there are so many great games, and I keep finding new ones to check out, so, yeah, I just wanted to really come on and just say that, actually, I don't think the PlayStation 2 is as shit as I once thought it was, <laughs> and maybe it can sort of compete with the Xbox if you get past the fact that the Xbox is a beast, and you just enjoy the games for what they are, which is what it's all about. So what I'm doing recently, because obviously there's lockdown, I can't go to CEX and everything, I'm just buying a game, like I have been doing with the PlayStation 1, but obviously PS2 games were a shitload cheaper. Just buying a game off eBay cheap, playing through it, and then buying another one to play through, which is great. I'm really enjoying that because, you know, I get a lot more out of it. Instead of, like, going to CEX, buying a stack of 10 or 15 games, stick them on the shelf, and then having to decide which one I want to play. And I'm just picking up, like, the collector mind always goes, like, click, 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 grab everything. And then the other day I just went, I can't decide what to buy it. So I said to myself, Pete, what do you want to play? That's more important. So I went ahead and I found a game that I wanted to play on the PS2 for a while, which I bought way back when I had the last play PlayStation 2 a few years ago. And I really got into it. I mean, it took, I don't know, probably over five years ago now. And it's an exclusive that I absolutely loved in a, a franchise that I absolutely love. And I got quite far, but I never finished the game and I've wanted to do it ever since. There was a copy in Insane Games in Bridgewater, but it was the the, uh, the front case was all gouged unfortunately the artwork was gouged and gone through the plastic into the artwork so was, that was annoying it was only like about what, 80p or something it wasn't expensive so I won one for 99p on eBay and it's coming so yeah I'll be doing a pick up video next and uh, talking about that so I'm going to enjoy playing through that and then I'll pick up another game so I've got another one that I've got my eye on that I want to play 
Um, but yeah, it's, it's really great. I'm the same in playing PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 a lot at the moment and having a lot of fun. So yeah, there you go. Have you ever had a system, guys, where you just haven't clicked or you, like me, you clicked with it for like a short period of time, like my first year with the PlayStation 2, and then you've gone onto something else and you've just never really been able to get back into that system? Or do you just love all systems and you've never really had that issue? Let me know down below in the comments. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it's been interesting and uh, I'll see you in the next one.